Hi, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo chats. So today I'm gonna to talk about what inspires you and what camera do you take? If I'm reading up about Alfred Eisenstadt, who shot for Life Magazine, and he shot the famous photo of the sailor kissing the woman in Times Square after World War II ended, I'll take a Leica 3 with me because I think he shot with a Barnack Leica. If I am thinking about Eggleston, I might take a Leica M out with me. This is a Leica R 6.2. This is their SLR that they didn't really get a big market on the SLR world. The pros were using the Nikons and the Canons and these were expensive for what they were compared to the Nikons and the Canons. And then the lenses were expensive, so a lot of photographers at the newspaper I worked at, nobody used a Leica R. And these you can get for a lot less expensive than a Leica M. And you actually see through the lens on these, and the lenses aren't so expensive. But back in the 80s, 90s, there was one guy at our paper who used a Leica M series, but he had two or three bodies, like M6s. But really, Everybody used Canon and Nikon. There was one guy who used Olympus, and I don't think there was another brand that I saw out in the field amongst anybody else. And this 6.2, I took out recently because I was reading a biography of William Klein, who was born in 28, and he was kind of instrumental in bringing fashion shoots for Vogue out of the studio and into the streets and shooting fashion models in scenes where people were passing by naturally. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to shoot my 6.2 because in the YouTube documentary, which I'll put in a link below so you can see it if you want to see more about William Klein, he's an elderly gentleman. This must have been just shot a few years ago. And He's driving around and they're talking about his days growing up and some of his work. And as they're discussing it, he's shooting out the window with his 6.2. And he's shooting inside the different stores he goes in with his 6.2. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take the 6.2 out. Because that's how I get inspired by different photographers. And they kind of connect that way. And you have different cameras for different reasons. I shoot large format for different reasons than 35 millimeter. I shoot the Rolleiflex for different reasons when I want a larger negative or I want to print a square. And so the same is true for what inspires you today? What camera should you take? Well, sometimes for me, it's connecting with other photographers. And maybe because we're in a time of pandemic where we're not having a lot of social interaction, this is a way for me to have a little bit of a feeling of, well, there's something going on. I'll take this camera. And this camera is on number 29. I was shooting it at a friend's house the other night. And the point of it is it was at number 20 for a while. And I haven't been shooting it that much. And I'm sure there are photos on here from a few years ago. And so that's going to be a fun treat. That's the point of, again, photography for me is sometimes getting away from the photograph and making it and then not seeing it right away because then I get to have that little win of, oh, look at this great one. Oh, look at that fun one. Oh, look at that memory. And the film allows me to do that. So I'll probably run the rest of this film out this week so I can get this film into a processing tank and finally see it. But the reason the camera came out is because of a documentary I'm watching. And I wonder how many other people get inspired by the things that they watch, the other photographers they see. And they happen to have that same camera and they say, I'm going to go shoot with that today because that person and their style inspires me. And I'm inspired by all kinds of people. I love all kinds of different techniques. I love watching people work. I love watching large format photographers work. I love people using 35 and I'm a big fan of shooting from the hip or making photographs. I always talked about Robert Frank was very good at like being very fluid and almost like this like 
pointing the camera and shooting without even looking. And I find I do that maybe because I'm driving and it re is required that I not look. But I, I find I'm very, very fluid. I can point a camera out the window and shoot without even a glance. And sometimes the camera's in motion the whole time I'm moving it. And I'm counting on that four thousandths of a second shutter speed to freeze whatever I pointed at. But I'm very aware of that. That's a certain way of working. I'm very aware of walking down a street and shooting on a sidewalk and shooting street. And I'm very aware of the deliberateness of shooting a Rolleiflex or shooting black and white film in a like R6. So there's a lot of different things that bring us inspiration. So it's just a matter of knowing what's yours or what's yours today. And maybe all of it works together to get you out the door and get you working. That old line that the muse exists, but it has to find you working. All of these are different reasons to just say, I'm taking this tool and I'm going to work today on this. And you actually make something because something has to get you out the door. Something has to be the reason that you're going to shoot today. What is today's story? What are you going to make? And if you're making art, you can create your whole world. If you're documenting street or something that's happening, then you just go out and you find that moment that captures your attention. So that's how I get inspired. I'd be interested in hearing how you do. All right, I welcome your comments. That's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, please hit the Patreon. Even a coffee or so a week would be great. And I will be back next week. We'll talk photography. Have a good week. Here's the good light.